y'all, welcome to Midwest Fishing Adventures. Today we're going to tie the Frosty Minnow. This is a spinoff of the DNA Clouser by Aaron Caldwell. Um, if you just Google DNA Clouser, you can see where I came up, where I got the idea for this pattern. And I tie it just a little bit different than Aaron does, and we'll explain the differences as we go through the tying process. So let's get started. The first difference is the hook. Aaron uses the number two, I use the number four. This is a great hook right here. It's the Mustad 34007. It uh, is a stainless steel saltwater hook and it's super, super sharp. Uh, let's go ahead and get our hook in the vise. All right, we're gonna tie an olive over white pattern today and you can do many variations to this the color patterns here. But let's just do a uh, olive over white. Let's get my thread started. Okay, now where you leave the thread is where you stop your thread is pretty important in the fact that you want to be consistent. And so in order for me to be consistent, here's what I do. I take the thread all the way down to the hook point. So where my thread is hanging, it's right to the hook point. And I want the reason I do that is I know that every one of my <clears throat> frosty minnows, the thread is the same. I stop at the same place on every every fly. And this makes your flies more consistent. And that's one of your goals is to make a, con a fly that is basically the same fly every time you tie it. Um, then once I get to the hook point, I bring the thread back to the, about the halfway point. Halfway between the eye and the hook point right here. So if I divide basically halfway between the middle of the thread, I want to be in the middle of the thread. And this is where I'm going to tie in my dumbbell eyes. And I, I think the secret to my pattern here is these dumbbell eyes. These dumbbell eyes that I use are called crystal dumbbell eyes. I use the size large. And what is really unique about them is how they shine. If you take a look at them, uh, they're kind of a resin eye and they have glitter in them. And so as they move through the water and they catch the sunlight, they, they uh, kind of twinkle in the water. And I think this is one of the reasons this pattern is so successful. So you're, you're going to tie them on like any other dumbbell eye using the figure eight. So I'm going to go four this way. Now, when you first start your eyes on there, they're going to get cocked um, sideways because you're, you're going across the dumbbell eyes. So they're going to get cocked si sideways. So when I switch directions here, I'll come and do the other half of the figure eight, I pull towards 40, if you look at um, from uh, the thread is a 45 degree angle from the hook shank. I pull forward at a 45 degree angle. And this helps me pull these eyes in straight. The ultimate goal here when you're putting these eyes on is to have them parallel to the lower plane, parallel and perpendicular to the the hook shank. So you want the dumbbell eyes to make 90 degree angles with the hook shank. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm pulling them into place, getting them level. And then let's go the other direction. We're gonna put a couple of these in right here. And then at this point, I just secure these wraps by putting two tight wraps in the front and two tight wraps in the back. And then let's go back to the front, two tight wraps and back to the back, two tight wraps. Now this is the key that I learned from Aaron is how to really secure these dumbbells. They're pretty snug now, but how to really secure them is this right here. What you do is you go over, under, and back over the hook shank, under the dumbbell eye. Over the hook shank, under the dumbbell eye. And you, let's just do this several times right here. This really snugs them dumbbell, diet, dumbbell eyes down. Then um, after here, I'll do two tight wraps in the back, two tight wraps in the front, do one more figure eight. Two 
tight wraps in the back, two tight wraps in the front. All right, now our eyes are really secure, but what we're gonna do is, we're gonna make them super secure. And there, what I do is I take um, just a head cement um, and uh, a toothpick. And what I do is I put a glob of cement down. And I mean a pretty good glob. What I want it to do is soak the threads and I want it to run down onto the hook shank. That, this cement doesn't set super fast. And so what's gonna happen as I tie my other materials in, it, they're gonna get saturated with this head cement. And it's gonna make a super good bond and keep all my materials in place. So that's right there. Let's get our first material. This is the DNA Frosty Fish Fiber in white. Remember, the dumbbell eyes make this <clears throat> uh, make this fly travel upside down or hook point up in the water. So the bottom we want is white, and so that's what we're going to tie on top of the hook. So let's grab some fish fibers. When you think you got the right amount, it doesn't take much. Take a couple fiber, a uh, couple strands less and make sure you cut all the way at the top up here. Alright, so make sure you cut all the way at the top. And one reason you want to do that is you want your fibers to be the same length on all your flies all the time. And you don't waste the material. Then I fold these in half. Just like that. This is just like Aaron does on his DNA Clouser. Pretty much the same here. And then I uh, go ahead and what I want to do is stagger these tips. So I get like a, a tapered final product on the minnow. So I'm going to kind of stagger them, taper them out. And then I'm going to put this right down kind of where I want it and do a loose wrap and then another loose wrap and then I want to make sure my fibers stay on the top and then I fold them back and I want these top fibers to fold back shorter than the bottom fibers that gives me a nice taper so I got them where I want them I'm going to tie them in tight and then grab them all fold them back Pull them tight, and this is where I wrap, uh, tie them down in. So you can see that cement coming up through the fibers and the thread there. So I'm getting a nice saturation of the thread. Once I get them tied in how I want them here in the front, go under, cross under, and then go over the back fibers. And now here's the trick here, what I do. I pull forward here on the thread. You can see me pulling forward. And that pulls these fibers up under the dumbbell eyes. It gives me real snug. The fibers are real snug up against them dumbbell eyes. Once I get them in place, then I tie my wraps. Now, here's how I judge where to stop on my wraps here. About halfway from the back of the dumbbell eyes to the hook point is where I stop my wraps. And if you notice, if you look at my threads, they're saturated with that head cement. So now I'm just going to put a nice taper on them. And then I'm going to go back to the front, put a couple wraps. Now let's turn this upside down. So I have a generic vise. And now you can even see some of the cement is actually saturated through the bottom of the threads. That's perfect. It's going to give us a nice solid hold. I'm going to tie in my crystal flash. I just use pearl right here. And let's grab just two strands. I just grab two strands out of here. And then uh, I do the same thing. I fold these in half. Just like that and cut them. Now I take them all on my right hand <coughs> excuse me take them all on my right hand 
and then I put two on one side and two on the other side and then I find the halfway point of the strands and I pinch against the side of the hook right there and lay them down alright so now I'm gonna put two loose wraps on one two pull these fibers back up and over now take two fibers here and put them on one side of the hook and two fibers here and put them on the other side of the hook and pull them straight back and then I pinch all the fibers down the side of the hook we want these flash fibers we want the flash to stream down the side of the the body so let's go ahead and tie them in now I'm going to cross over and tie down to the same point or wrap to the same point about halfway see that halfway between the back of the eyes and the hook point and then go back forward and put a nice little taper on there now cross back over the other way so you have an X on the bottom underneath the dumbbell eyes and then put a couple more wraps on the front let's, let's get this tapered in there better alright and this is kind of sliding in my vise a little bit alright so the last thing we gotta do is we gotta tie in our primary color which is going to be the olive fish fibers and same thing so you just grab your fish fibers out and we're going to take um, a couple strands cut them as close as you can to the top up here Fold them in half. Right there. Cut them. Just tapered the tips. Just like that. Now it's time to tie them in. Just put them on the top. A couple of loose wraps. Get the fibers on the top there. Now let's bend them back again. We want that nice taper. This is pretty good. You can adjust these by pulling them back and forward until you get the desired effect there. See, so you notice how I have a nice taper here. That's what you want. Once you get that, let's tie them down tight, get some tight wraps, fold them over, and finish the job. Alright, so now, we got a nice taper on our head here. Nice, everything looks good. We just need the whip finish. Cut a thread here, just like that, and get our head seam at. And our toothpick. I just use a toothpick. That's the poor man's way to do this. And um, take this toothpick, and I'm just gonna coat my threads right here without getting any of that head cement on the eyes if possible. Coat these threads really nice right here. Just 
flip it over. Let's get the top side. And then uh, I'll put a little bit more on the back. And that's that. Put your semen away. And then the last thing I do is um, let's just trim it up. Some of these fibers get really long in the back. And uh, what we'll do is here, so you can see the back. Some of these fibers are long. We're gonna just tape it. We're gonna just prune it how we want it. You want your flash fibers just a little bit longer than your frosty fish fibers. And I kind of taper these to um, stagger them at different lengths. And that is the frosty. Minnow, right there.